Our first speaker today is Laura Lecuona. She's WDI's country contact for Mexico and author of the recently published book, Gender, Identity, Lies and Dangers, which I'm currently reading at the moment and is fantastic. So you'd think that not much new could be written because this, there have, has been a lot, but this is really new and very, very insightful book. Um, taking uh, a very, very helpful perspective. So I've, I keep on underlining bits of it and thinking, I'm going to use that, I'm going to use that. And it's in Spanish and in English. It's just come out in English. Anyway, um, welcome, Laura. Um, your talk today is Magical Realism, Mexican Politicians and Gender Identity. So over to you. The regulars to this webinar know full well that gender identity ideology is stretching its tentacles all over the world. But there are people who believe some countries are still spared, including Mexico. I will present some colorful examples that show how gender identity is pervading in this country, particularly in politics. Magical realism, according to Encyclopedia Britannica, is a chiefly Latin American narrative strategy that is characterized by the matter of fact inclusion of fantastic or mythical elements into seemingly realistic fiction. Magical realism, according to one Matthew Strenker, is what happens when a highly detailed realistic setting is invaded by, by something too strange to believe. It being a chiefly Latin American genre, it comes in handy for describing some situations which are growing more and more common in Mexico that beggar belief. Let me introduce to you some of the main Mexican advocates of gender identity. First of all, the first transgender deputy in the Mexican House of Representatives, Maria Clemente Garcia. He is a troublemaker. In 2021, he went inside the Congress cafeteria and a few, few minutes later, he yelled something at the staff, threw cups and dishes on the floor and strode out. He is also fond of abusing peaceful demonstrators on the streets, as when in May 2023, he told a woman who was demonstrating in favor of the new Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, I am a representative, but I represent poor people, not smug, wealthy people like you who scowl, who scowl, fucking posh hack. Or when in November 2022, he ran after several demonstrators to insult them, telling them, for example, all of you who are demonstrating in favor of the National Electoral Institute, who was the theme of the demonstration, are a bunch of lazy Indian plebis. He can yell racist or sexist, sexist slurs and nothing happens. Nevertheless, he wants to declare March 28th as a national day against hate speech. Some other bills he has proposed are, and this is interesting to, to, to see what the trans agenda is, what they are pushing, considering the murders of trans women as cases of femicide. By the way, two days ago, the Supreme Court determined that indeed, a man can be a victim of femicide. Of course, for this to work, they have to call those men trans women. Another bill is about decriminalizing HIV transmission. Another one is, of course, about regulating sex work. In fact, Maria Clemente claims to be a sex worker and boasts about it. Um, yeah, in October 2022, he posted in his Twitter X account a video of him performing oral sex to a man. Some Congresswomen were very uncomfortable and criticized him for it, considering it was not an appropriate behavior for a deputy. My body, my choice, he said, of course. Most interesting of all, on July 6, 2022, he interrupted a conference on tackling human trafficking and migrant smuggling. He became enraged when Spanish feminist Rosa Cobo claimed that the sex trade should be abolished and called this hate speech. Uh, Dr. Hulk, Dr. Cobo had said, 
Prostitution is not right from an ethical and political point of view. It is not acceptable for a woman to become an object, and it is not acceptable for a man to objectify and commit violence against women who have very few resources and who are vulnerable. The climax came when Sonia Sanchez, a reference point for Latin American abolitionist feminism, told him that no woman is born a whore. And this man shouted back, I am a woman and I was born a whore and I like it, big deal. De manera muy respetuosa, que las opiniones vendidas en este Congreso, que serán vendidas inclusive a lo largo de los días del desarrollo de este Congreso, eh, son responsabilidad exclusiva de quienes expresan y vierten esos comentarios. No pueden usarlos estos, los recursos ningún, públicos, los medios públicos para promover la discriminación. De la Están Cámara utilizando el medio público para contravenir la constitución política de los Estados Dicho Unidos mexicanos. Esto, Two months later, in October 2022, Maria Clemente Garcia seeked to offend a rival representative with whom he had participated in a TV debate, tweeting, Isn't it true that Teresa Castell has undergone so many plastic surgeries that she is the one who looks trans? I look more natural than her, don't you think? Note how in two lines, he managed to mock both middle-aged women for whom beauty mandates are particularly merciless and trans-identified males who don't have so much passing as he believes he has. Teresa Castell, on the right, sued Maria Clemente Garcia for gender-based violence. One of the reasons was the tweet just quoted about the physical features of Teresa Castell, and another one is what happened the day when this photo was taken. Castell was in the Congress walking by, and Maria Clemente Garcia blocked her way in a threatening, threatening attitude and yelled at her. The electoral tribunal determined that even though Garcia had committed symbolic violence, she had been justified because Castell had called her a biological man. And they rationalized. This tribunal has to take into consideration the context of transphobia and violence experienced by the defendant as a trans woman, which leads us to conclude the violent conduct is non-existent. Maria Clemente Garcia Moreno, as a trans woman, is extremely vulnerable and she struggles day by day for the recognition of her identity and her rights, and her rights, which becomes a constant burden in her life. When there is an aggression, there is a reaction, and this can be expressed through dignified rage. Rage is not violence. It, it is an accumulated emotional reaction that expresses inconformity in the face of an injustice or persistent pain due to an unjust cause. So uh, all these scenes we have just seen are not violence, are only expressions of accumulated pain or persistent pain. Well, Maria Clemente Garcia might be one of the most picaresque characters in transgender politics, but by no means the only one. This is Salma Luevano. He's not in a nightclub, but in the Congress, the day of the opening. So this is his first day in the new job. Luevano is the other first deputy of the Federal Congress who is trans. They don't say one of the first two trans deputies. They don't say one of the first two trans deputies. Both of them claim to be the first. Note, note how the same newspaper, El País, in different notes, describes both of them as the very first. 
In April 2022, along with several congresswomen, these two seized the podium, demanding Deputy Gabriel Cuadri, who is not in the photo, demanding him to be expelled from the Congress. Let me tell you what happened. When the deputies were debating the general health law, Cuadri had presented a motion, and these are his words, to prevent children and adolescents from being subjected to hormonal procedures, poverty suppression, or genital mutilation procedures without the consent of their parents and without a court order. And he added, these types of interventions should be taken exclusively by adults fully aware of the consequences on health as well as on family, reproductive and sexual life. Then Salma Luebano, here in a white dress, called Quadri a murderous scoundrel and threatened him in a violent way, saying, as a proud trans woman, I want to tell the gentleman that he is very wrong and that he should also remember that he has children and family and that hopefully, hopefully, that will shut his mouth. In response, Quadri then said, I want to draw attention to the fact that Mr. Ruevano is threatening me in the plenary and that he does not provide any argument to the issue we are dealing with. He only insults and disqualifies. He wasn't lying. But indignation took over the chamber, as one reporter said. Deputy Cynthia Lopez Castro said that Quadri was violating Article 1st of the Constitution and non -discrimination, on, on non discrimination, and that, uh, that calling uh, this man in the white dress Mr. was disrespectful because Luevano decided to be a woman. And she demanded a public apology because he, Quadri, is disrespecting all women, all deputies, and all Mexicans who have fought for many years in this country against discrimination. For this politician, as for many, as for any trans ally worthy of the name, imitating a woman is a human right. But saying Mr. to a man is disrespectful to all women. That's when Salma Luevano and his fellow first trans deputy, Maria Clemente Garcia, seized the podium. Then Garcia pushed, as we can see here, 70-year-old Santiago Creel, who was then president of the Chamber of Deputies, and snatched the microphone out of his hands. There's a video on that. There's no time to play it here, but you, you can search for it. Um, later that day, Garcia apologized with his whole heart, saying, he had misbehaved and been disrespectful. Creel answered, anyone can make a mistake, let's turn the page. In case you are wondering if Maria Clemente ever apologized to Sonia Sanchez and the speakers and audience at the Congress on Human Trafficking, no, he didn't. In response to Cuadri's alleged transphobia, Salma Luevano shaved his head and said, Hate speech almost always ends in hate crimes. Gabriel Cuadri is responsible of anything that might happen to me or my sisters from now on. By his sisters, he means other men like him, uh, so-called trans women. Hair grows back, but people's lives never come back. That's what he said. Long story short, Luevano sued Gabriel Cuadri for, for calling him Mr. and for some supposedly transphobic tweets, and Cuadri was convicted of gender-based political violence. Remember Cuadri was trying to protect children from unnecessary treatments and surgeries? The diversionary tactic proved to be very effective. Everything was overshadowed by the unforgivable misgendering and the newspapers did not talk at all about the dangers of suppressing puberty, but about Quadri calling Luevano Mister. Surprise, surprise, Salma Luevano likes dressing up, not only as a woman, as a woman. He can disguise as a Pope in a country where 78% of the population is Catholic, 
and he can make fun of his political adversaries, as Gabriel Quadri, who he is uh, disguised at here in, in the second photo. And everything is fine. In March 2023, Salma Luevano sued Teresa Castell, the same deputy Maria Clemente Garcia had committed a non-existent act of violence against, for a couple of tweets referring to Maria Clemente and Salma Luevano himself, uh, which read, the, the tweets read, these trans deputies are biological men and they don't represent the, the LGBT community. And the behavior of these trans deputies shows, uh, shows hate speech and violence against women. Two months later, the Electoral Tribunal ruled that Castell's views constituted gender-based political violence against women. As a punishment, Castell must take a course in political violence and she must extend a public apology and publish an, an excerpt of the sentence on her ex-account. In addition, she will be catalogued in the National Registry of Persons Sanctioned for Gender-Based Political Violence, which, by the way, was created to protect female politicians from political violence, not male politicians, for being allegedly misgendered. Last January, in a political event in Yucatan, Salma Luevano greeted Andrés Manuel López Obrador, the president of Mexico, with a kiss in the cheek. But the president was visibly taken aback. The people notice, noticed it and criticized him. So he had to give an explanation. The very next day, very candidly and blissfully ignorant of who's in charge now and what are the new rules we have to abide by, the president said, I kissed a man dressed as a woman. But I kiss men and they kiss me and men have sentiments. What's sexual preference got to do with it? But then, of course, the president was criticized for misgendering Luevano. There was even a, a demonstration to, mina, to demand a public apology. And apologize he did. The next day he said, I want to apologize to a mate who identifies as a woman because yesterday I said she was a man dressed as a woman. I am very respectful and I believe in freedom and people should accept themselves however they identify us. If you are wondering if Lopez Obrador has ever apologized to the women of this country for the 3,000 women killed each year with total impunity, no, he hasn't. And uh, Salma Luevano didn't call him a transphobe. The bills Salma Luevano has presented in Congress include one for declaring November 13 each year National Day Against Hate Crimes, another one for declaring June 18 each year National Day to Counter Hate Speech, and another one for declaring March 28 each year National Day to Fight Hate Speech. And he's promoting a bill called Ociel Baena to imprison anyone who murders someone because of their sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, sexual characteristics, race, religion, disability, or nationality. Of course, this is already punished. No, no, the, the, the law says anyone who kills anyone has to go to prison. But who is Ociel Baena? As the newspaper El Financiero in the fashion section put it, in a note titled, The Skirts with Which Magistrate de Jesus Ossoyel Baena Fought for LGBT Community, he considered himself non-binary and in 2021 started to use skirts and high-heeled shoes in the electoral tribunal in Aguascalientes as a message of inclusion and freedom. He made history by being the first non-binary magistrate in Latin America. Also, the first non-binary passport was issued for him. How did he know he was non-binary? There's an interview in which he confesses that he considered gen so-called gender quotas for women unfair and discriminatory. Increasing women's representation in legislatures 
wasn't his cup of tea. So what did he do? He declared himself non-binary in order to be able to compete for seats meant for women. He was very popular in social media and he spent a lot of time making these little videos to promote gender ideology and show off his skirts and his fans. He obtained a lot of benefit from his self for from his self-proclaimed identity and his extravagance. In November 2023, Jesus Social Baena was found dead along with his male partner in their home. This was a tragedy, of course. But it was determined that no third party entered their home that night. So logically, one of them had killed the other one and then killed himself. Nevertheless, trans activists utterly reject that version and claim it was a hate crime period. It is very suitable to their narrative and to all those bills about hate speech and hate crimes. To their minds, there is no possibility other than a hate crime <laughs> caused by so-called hate speech. There is evidence that points to Baena himself as a killer, but the public prosecution service dared not elaborate on it. The official version only hints in a very tangled way that the killer was his partner. Meanwhile, trans activists, including Maria Clemente Garcia, why not, capitalized politically on the killing. Says Maria Clemente, Osiel Baena's death was consequence of a hate crime. Saying no third party was implied in the killing, he's homophobic, ambiphobic, and transphobic. And deputies Teresa Castell and America Rangel, Senator Lili Tejes, and failed presidential candidate Eduardo Perastegui, with their hate speech, incited the killing. So they should be investigated. Finally, I want to mention one of the main trans activists in this country. He doesn't identify as transgender, but he's the best ally any autogynephile could dream of. He was a member of the Mexico Supreme Court of Justice until November 15, 2023. He was chief justice from January 2019 to January 2023. He fiercely advocates the transgendering of children, and is very friendly and accommodating to those men he calls trans women. In fact, it seems that this is something personal to him, you know. And on January 27, he declared, trans women are women. This can no longer be discussed or debated because trans women also have the right to live an honorable life in peace without fear. Trans women are women, and they are the most discriminated against, and they suffer more hate crimes than anyone else, and it is more difficult for them to transit in their transition in this world. I hope these few examples have shown how thoroughly, thoroughly captured some Mexican institutions are, and how magical realism is not limited to Gabriel Garcia Marquez's and Isabel Allende's books. Mexican politicians do not lack behind. Thank you very much. <laughs>